Sorry, no sound. I was just saying hi, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> anyhow, uh, I was saying I was. I have a lot of things going on today. Ho hopefully, the sound is on now. Um, I don't know why why that was off. <laughs> oh, thank thanks, Rob. I um, I went to um, oh, you know, there's something wrong with this window. It's backwards. Oh. Give me a second. Flip horizontal. There we go. Now, now, it looks more natural when I'm looking over here like I'm looking at you guys' uh, chat window, which I am. But uh, this is my left hand, my right. Okay, yeah, we're good. <laughs> oh. But yeah, a lot, lot of exciting things um, for me anyway. Uh, tonight I'm going to go to uh, see, uh, what is it called, Olympus Capturing the Light kind of uh, event at the local camera store. And they're going to have uh, Joe Edelman there. So I'm kind of excited to meet him in person because uh, I'll, I'll catch his live streams time to time. And I've, I've watched, uh, you know... I don't know, a dozen or so of his tutorials on uh, doing portrait photography and stuff. So he, he has a lot of good work there. Uh, and, it you know, he shoots Olympus now, but a lot of his tutorials he did on Nikon. And it, but, you know, that doesn't matter, right? I mean, it, the, the techniques and the, the process is pretty much the same regardless of the camera that you have. So I'm going to meet him. And, it, and with any luck, I'll be able to find a Wi-Fi signal and I can maybe live stream while I'm there. So that's going to be in about uh, four hours from now. Uh, but we'll see. Because um, if I can't live stream, because unlike a lot of places, we don't have like free Wi-Fi everywhere around here. You, you would think it would, but um, we, we really don't. Uh, so that's, that's, that's what I'm doing tonight. And then tomorrow I have a... Um, a portrait session for some some kind of uh, musical I don't know he's a musician of some kind but he does it digitally with uh, some device he has so I'm gonna do a couple of shots of that so I've never done portraits before like professionally other than the occasional family holiday thing so this will be a very different thing I think I'm gonna try and do uh, uh, some sort of um, funky things with lighting so i'm going to try and bring maybe three flashes my 8200 my tt350 and then uh one of my young nuos that has just an optical trigger and i'm going to put some gels on it and maybe try and do some red backgrounds and blue backgrounds and uh you know uh, use my little can cooler snoot i don't know i'm just trying to think creative i told him to send me some pictures of what he's kind of going for, the kind of look he's going for, but he hasn't sent me anything yet, so I, I don't even know where to start when I get there. Because like I said, it's not it's not really my genre doing portrait photography, particularly uh, something for a musician, right? Um, maybe I'll do some light painting, you know, uh, with my LED light that I'm using now. I don't know. I'm just going to spend a couple hours with them and, and, you know, I'm not charging them anything because it's, it's kind of like a friend of mine's kid. Uh, but I would imagine you would charge, you know, 200, 300 bucks for a photo shoot like that. But if I do a good job, you know, I can add that to my portfolio and maybe if, if, if he allows me, I can, uh, do a behind the scenes kind of video too as well. Assuming the pictures come out good. So look, look for that maybe Saturday, Sunday. Uh, so that's what I'm doing tomorrow. So tonight will be fun with Joe Edelman. And tomorrow uh, a portrait shoot, which will be a first for me. And then um, uh, Sunday we have the, uh, the live stream with uh, Robin Wong and uh, uh, Peter Forsgaard. And there's going to be, God, I, you know, I put up a little promo video to kind of get some questions pre-live stream. And gosh, there's a lot of questions there already, a lot of good questions. So uh, that that'll be fun. So make sure if you if you can try and make it on Sunday as well, because uh, I I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to get guests, you know, because as the weather warms up a little bit, 
um, people are going to be traveling more. Like, for example, um, Micro Four Nerds, you know, Emily, you know, she's going to start getting in the wedding mode and going to be gone every weekend. So I doubt she'll want to be live streaming on top of that, right, with me. And like I said, when the weather warms up, you know, the the availability of guests kind of knocked down. And particularly people like uh, James Popsis, you know, his schedule is just not workable. Uh, so that may take a couple months to get down. And then I was thinking, uh, I don't know, what do you guys think about maybe Casey from Camera Conspiracies? <laughs> I don't know if he'd even want to come on because I want to ask him, you know, why he doesn't try Olympus more, you know, because he's, he's always getting loners for everything else, but he never gets any any Olympus. And one time he got an Olympus, you know, he didn't know what he was doing. Uh, so I'd like them to, you know, he had it for what, 10 minutes, you know? So I'd like to get him to try an Olympus camera, you know, for, for a few days like he does every other camera he gets. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he'll steal the show. You know, it's very different, though, when somebody's on, on uh, doing a video versus somebody doing a live stream, right? Their personalities might be very different. Uh, <clears throat> I mean... You know, like uh, I thought when I had Red Red Thirty Four Five over Jimmy Chang, he was very different on camera and live than he is in his videos, right? At least I thought so. He was very very serious, and uh, um, <clears throat> another person that seems very different. Uh, I've you know I've never had him on, but um, uh, I forget his name. But, you know, the angry photographer guy, whenever you see any videos of him, like when he was with uh, God, another creator, a couple other creators, he was very low key, you know, like he had no, just very, very quiet, seemed like a really nice guy, like in person. And then when you watch his videos, he's a freaking lunatic. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so I, uh, but, you know. Peter and Robin and uh, Emily, they were pretty much the same on camera and when they do their videos, right? They were pretty much the same. You got what, you know, what you see is what you get. But sometimes people are very different. But uh, we'll see. I don't, I don't think Casey hates Olympus, you know. Uh, but I'm, I'm looking for some landscape photographers as well. You know, of course, James is one, but he's, he's a little hard to get a hold of. And then... Uh, you know, Thomas Heaton, but he'll be impossible, right? Because he's always in his little van going places. So we'll see. But maybe, um, you know, if you can go to my website, the forum, and put some recommendations for some landscape photographers for me to contact. Because uh, I'd like to, I'd like, you know, because as the weather warms up, right, we can start doing more landscape photography. At least I will, because I, I hate the freaking cold. That's why these photo walks have been very far and few between, you know, over the winter for me. Because when it when it gets cold, I just I just can't handle that. Um, and uh, I don't know. And, and maybe some other genres of photography, not just landscape. You know, maybe a portrait photography. Maybe I can get Joe Edelman on, right? <laughs> um, but he's he's another one where his schedule is probably booked week to week, right? And he'd probably, I'd probably have to pay him to come on. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, so uh, that's that. And then, um, gosh, there was something else. I'm forgetting. I oh oh yeah. Uh, I got an email from another viewer about. Um, and I think it was a question for the upcoming live stream about the the lens hood on the 40 to 150 Pro. So I think I put the links down below to uh, a post from DP Review where somebody sort of did a DIY of fixing the lens hood because apparently it disintegrates. And, uh, you know, just over a short period of time, like it doesn't last anywhere near as long as it should. Uh, so there's a DIY post there, 
And uh, I also put a link to a video that shows kind of a close-up of the of where it breaks and falls apart. And it has to do something to do with the glue or the bindings that they use to attach the lens hood. I don't own that lens, so I have no idea, really. And just below the link to the video, I put a link to a substitute alternative lens hood that you can use. Now, in that video, the guy does suggest an alternate lens hood. It's like a for a Canon. It's a 73 Part II or Mark II, uh, 135 millimeter lens. But that part is no longer available. So I put a link to a what should be an identical lens cap that should fit. But I, I don't know personally because I haven't tried it. But the way I normally buy lens hoods separately is I buy the screw-in type that screw right into the lens filter uh, ring. I don't like the plastic ones that twist on myself. I prefer the screw-on. So I put a link to a uh, rubber lens hood with a 72 millimeter filter ring. So if you have that lens and your lens hood is broken, check out those links. You know, if you're ambitious, you can try and repair it on your own. Uh, and if you, uh, if you want an alternative, you can try that rubber lens hood, which, you know, I think would work well. <clears throat> um, I see. Okay, so Wiki, hi. Uh, seems the new Olympus EM1 Mark III is 99% what I need, 100%. <laughs> yeah, the illuminated buttons, man. I would, I would love a camera. You know, I, I've said this in other videos. If a camera has a top plate LCD and illuminated buttons, and there was one other thing, um, a really good EVF, I would definitely buy it, you know, or just give me two out of three, right? And uh, the M1 Mark III doesn't have any of those things, right? The EVF's the same, which is kind of an average okay. Doesn't have illuminated buttons um, and no top plate LCD. But it has other features that are kind of interesting. But let me finish your question. Is the new autofocus with the 12 to 100 lens on the same level like Sony? Oh, okay. Uh, I, I don't know. I've only watched other videos where it seems like it's good, but I don't think anybody's near Sony level with the eye detect yet. Uh, but I, I haven't... I haven't handled the camera myself, so I'm going tonight actually to look at that camera. Uh, but since I don't own a Sony, I couldn't tell you firsthand if it's better than a Sony because I've never shot with with a newer Sony that has their latest autofocus system. Um, so maybe uh, on Sunday when Robin and Peter are there, they can give you a little better feedback. Um, but I, yeah, I personally don't know. Um, oh, E6 vlog. Okay, thanks, Serge. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try and reach out to him. Because there was a couple landscape photographers. I forget their names. I think one was Craig Ferguson. No, not Craig. That's that's E6 vlogs, right? <laughs> it's another guy named Craig, I think. Uh, but he doesn't have any email contact information on his YouTube channel or his social media. So I, I have no way of getting in touch with him. I might just have to leave a comment. Uh, Joe Ellis, yep, that's true. I keep forgetting about Joe. Um, he has he has a great Olympus channel. You know, it's not one that I watch, um, but I think I think he does a good job. You know, for a lot of you, I think uh, really like his channel. Um, hi Thomas, <laughs> you didn't miss anything. Um, hi Mohammed, yep, Craig Roberts, thank you. Um. I have the lens and the easy fix to do it before it breaks. Just apply three small pieces of black tape on the inside. That way it will not separate. Hmm. I think you're talking about the 40 to 150 lens hood. Okay. I. You'd have to be a little bit more descriptive, Lars. Um, maybe if I had the lens, it would make more sense what you mean. But I, just from that, I can't tell. Um, oh, okay. Um, sure, Wiki, I try. I try. Hi, Best Shots. Hi, hi Catalan. How are you? 
Wow, a lot, a lot of, a lot of you guys are here. I appreciate that. I, you know, I normally I post the link up to the live stream like 24 hours ahead. Um, but I felt that was too long, so I just did it like two hours ahead this time. And most of you know, most of my regulars know that I just come on Thursday, Sundays anyway. But I started a little bit early today uh, because, like I said, I'm going to go to that event tonight. So I'm going to try and keep this one a little bit shorter than normal. But who knows? We'll see how it goes. If I get to the other thing late, it's fine. But I'm going to have to really, really control myself not to buy that EM1 Mark III. I mean, I, I want it so bad, you know, it's just because I have gas like to no end. But I, the, the only thing that really attracts me about that camera is the high, handheld high-res shot mode, the live ND, and the star EAF. Those, those things are things that would be really nice to have in the camera that I don't have now. But everything else, there's not much I would do. I think it also has a 10-bit 422 output for video, which again, would just be kind of a nice to have. So all these things that this camera has are, are nice to have, but nothing I need, right? Because if I want to do high-res shot, I can just bring a tripod and do handheld, or do tripod high-res shots. Uh, but I try to avoid bringing a tripod. And the Live ND looks handheld, so if if they, you know what's going to, you know what's going to, tie the knot for me though is if they have a special because sometimes they waive the sales tax or not waive it but they pay it for you kind of like B&H does they pay the sales tax for you so that's about a hundred bucks off in addition to a two hundred dollar trade-in value so that's like three hundred so I'll be getting the camera for uh what fourteen ninety nine fifteen hundred bucks man that's a lot of money though for just, just a few features I'll just use once in a while. And I hardly take my EM1 Mark II out now um, because I just I just prefer the size of the EM5 Mark III when I go out, and it does everything well. But that 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 handheld high-res shot mode's got me uh got me thinking. Elaine, how are you? What do you mean not shorter? What did I miss there? <laughs> <clears throat> Rob's asking, have I ever thought about doing double exposure? I saw a photo inspired me to do something like that. I think I saw it was more post-processing, but I want to play with it in camera. Uh, yeah, I'm, actually, you know, it's funny. I was practicing a little double exposure the other day just in my living room. I've got about a thousand shots in my living room these last few days. You know, that's what I do in the wintertime, right? It's just take pictures while I'm watching TV. Um, but I have a few ideas. I, I do have a video on not specifically double exposure, uh, but it's called something about getting the Orton effect with uh, using double exposure. And I have a couple of shots in there where I did do some some double exposure shots which came out all right i mean the idea being you just have to be kind of conscious of the light right you need a clear uh white background then you kind of need a silhouette of the subject that you want to be part of that background so it, ta it takes a little practice and you don't have to do much in post-processing i mean the images i did in that video if you catch it uh were straight out of camera and, you know, as, as I usually do, I like straight out of camera images when I show you guys stuff. Um, Ulf is asking, why is Cinema 4K supposed to be better than 4K 30p? Well, it's, it's, it's slightly higher resolution. And it seems like they might be using a slightly different Kodak uh, where the, the, it's a little bit sharper than shooting at 4k 30. so that that was kind of the main reason um uh, and the cinema 4k is a different aspect ratio right it's a 17 by 9 so that you get a little bit wider field of view or perception of a wider field of view you really don't they're just cutting the top and bottom off i think but um 
Uh, it may be it may be extending a little bit out more on the sides of the sensor to give you that extended view because it is wider. Um, but yeah, I it it sam it's you know it's sampling a little bit more to give you a little bit more high resolution. But that's that's all really. I mean, I I've shot in 4K 30 and Cinema 4K and. Then I just upload the YouTube in 1080p most of the time, so it's not a big deal. I mean, if you're hardcore into video, you know, I recommend just getting a GH5 or something. Uh, but for just casual video, really 1080p is good enough, right? <clears throat> Marcus, you love your M5 Mark II. Yeah, it's an awesome camera. I've been uh, messing with it. Uh, as well, I've been comparing the the high res shot mode of this camera versus the uh, EM5 Mark III and the Pen F, right? Because those two cameras have 20 megapixel sensors, but ultimately they the the resolution is the same in high res shot mode, and it yeah it turns out to be the same. It's identical. I didn't see any difference. And man, this you know. And I get it, you know, people that, that like the feel of an all-metal body, um, this definitely has a good, solid, you know, substantial feel to it uh, over my EM5 Mark III. But, you know, it, the, the plastic body doesn't bother me, but, you know, just picking it up, I can feel, you know, this is plastic, that is metal. <laughs> uh but I'd rather have a lighter camera and just all plastic. I'm fine with that. Uh, Derek Force. Yes, I have seen RG Derek Force's videos. Um, he, he takes really nice pictures. Gordon Lang, Aaron J. Anderson are two good reviewers. Yes. Oh, oh, Elaine's saying because it might be a shorter show. Yeah, just a little bit, maybe. Um... Greetings from the Netherlands. Uh, you got the Panasonic 25F17 the other day and some added for some added low light capability after watching your vid on that. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, it's a great lens. I I mean, some people were saying they had back focusing problems, but I've, I've never had any issue with it. It focuses fine for me. Um, and it's it's a bargain. I got two of them. I've been talking about selling one. Maybe I'll trade some lenses in tonight. Oh, see, I'm thinking about the M5, EM1 Mark III again. But this this 25 millimeter from Panasonic is awesome. Um, but they'll probably give me like thirty or forty dollars for it on trade, you know. So I'm like, I don't know, for thirty forty bucks, I'll just keep two. I don't know. <laughs> It's terrible. Uh, I was thinking about a Mark III, but finally I convinced myself to focus on getting a 300 f4. Yeah, uh, I, I thought about that too. Uh, I could buy a lens for the price of that camera and probably... But I don't know. I... <sighs> I feel like I'm going to come home with an EM1 Mark III tonight. <laughs> it's just terrible. Because it just has a couple of things that I really like, but it's I don't know if it's worth 1500 bucks to do that. And I really can't afford to spend more money. You know, kind of... Did you guys see Robin Wong's video? He's in the same boat, man. It's like he just upgraded his computer and bought the EM5 Mark III. So he's he's kind of dished out a, a handsome sum as well. So the M1 Mark III is is kind of a big pill to swallow when you've already just kind of you know shot your load basically. Um, I, hi Richard, how are you? Um, David Black says the M1 Mark III is a nice camera. I got mine today, got mine on Monday. Oh, that's when it was released. I prefer the camera slightly bigger than the EM5 Mark III's camera size. Yeah. I think if I was just doing photography and wasn't worried about vlogging, I think the 
EM1 Mark III or Mark II would be my camera of choice because of all the additional features that it has. Uh, so if you haven't seen my video yet, David, on EM5 Mark III versus the EM1 Mark III, there's a lot of significant differences between the two cameras other than size. So you might want to watch that just to kind of get a feel for the things. Like I remember tethering was one of them. Uh, but the obvious ones are handheld high res shot. And then also, uh, you know, actually, Dave, maybe you can answer a question. Do you know if you can charge? I know you can charge the camera through the USB-C, but they're saying you should be able to use the camera through the USB-C as well. Hi, Soren. How are you? Leave my credit card at home. No, not possible. Because I have to pay for parking when I go there, and I need my credit card. <laughs> um, yeah, gas is hard to get rid of. Be strong. Getting rid of money is easy. It's not even money, right? It's just, it's just a piece of plastic, right? Your credit card. You feel like, you know, it's not maxed out, so I can go buy something. The only time I can't buy things is when I maxed out my cards. And then and then I'm just like, you know, that's when I have control is when I don't have any choice. <laughs> Ivan says, I looked at the Pana, Pana 1.725 second hand. The iris is partially closed when not, when not on the camera. Is that right? It worked okay on the camera. Oh, I don't know. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll take mine off. Yeah, it's partially closed on mine, too. I don't know if you can see that. See, it's partially closed. And then when I put it on... Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> You know the reason the reason they close the blades when you take the the lens off the camera and and let me take another let me let me look at another lens before I say jack about it yeah when you turn off the camera or when you when you take the uh, the blade the the lens off of the camera they close the blades down because uh, when the blades are open they're all recessed into the the lens mount right. And inside that part where it's recessed into is a lot of oil. So what happens is when the camera is exposed to heat, or I'm sorry, the lens is exposed to heat, sometimes the oil will seep onto the blades when they're all recessed back into the lens itself. So they close the blades down so that the blades are not, you know, are going to be less prone to the oil seeping onto the blades themselves. Uh, so that, that's why they do that. This is where a wife would help. Yeah, I have no no wife, no girlfriend, no kids. So that's that's why it's so easy for me to, you know, um, just buy whatever I want, right? Because I'm not accountable to anybody except myself. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> you think credit cards ain't money. You're lost. <laughs> I know. Richard says, talking Olympus things, I'm not happy, as you just said. The M5 Mark II is better in hand than the M5 Mark III. I just don't like the plastic feel of the M1. I assume you mean the M5 Mark III. Oh, the M1 Mark III badge on the front looks cheap. Yeah, that was uh, that was an odd choice to put the, the badge on the front. I mean, I can't speak to how it feels because I haven't seen it yet or held it, but... Um, you know, cameras, you know, it, it's nice to get all fancy pants with some bling, but I, that seems a little bit over the top. Uh, I mean, I, I'm fine with or without it, but it, it just seems like they didn't need to do that. If, especially if they're just going to make it plastic, right? Because if it's plastic, then it's painted silver on top and that'll wear out. But if it's metal, that would be kind of cool. I'll, I'll give it a close look tonight. I'll look very closely at the the little badge on the front and see if that's actually metal or plastic. Uh, 
Um, I have charged the M1 Mark III by USB-C when driving around. I haven't tried using it when powered by USB. Yeah, I think the, the idea was that this is a camera you can do really long exposures, right? Time lapses and things like that. Uh, and uh, what's the other thing people do? But yeah, there's there's some applications where you know a battery doesn't cut it. Well, a direct application for me would be my live streams, right? Because I can get about three hours out of my EM1 Mark II battery pretty consistently. But uh, as you guys know, my live streams just go longer than three hours sometime, and just going USB-C would be kind of would eliminate that problem for me as well. So, like I said, you know, when you have gas, you can start to justify everything, right? Because <sighs> that was the other thing I was thinking of. Oh, oh, um, there's another big news. Uh, yeah, tethered shooting. Thank you, Tony. Uh, the Olympus, getolympus.com has some amazing deals right now. Uh, if you've been thinking about getting a camera or lens, so... Uh, let me let me pull it up. Um, where is it? B A. Where's my shopping links here? Here it is. Um, oh, what? <clears throat> but right now they got 20% off whatever price you see here. So a good example would be, like, look at this, a 75 millimeter F1.8. So you can take 120 bucks off of that. Uh, another lens... Here's the 40 to 150 Pro. I can take $220 off of this price. So now we're down to 900. And you can get the 25 F1.8, take $40 off that. That's $160. Um, EM5 Mark II, $499, 20% off. So that's $400, like $399 for that. And then uh, look at this an EM10 Mark II with. The standard kit lens, three forty nine. So you can take seventy dollars off that. So you can get it. You can get a brand new. Or I'm sorry, reconditioned EM10 Mark II for uh, two hundred and eighty dollars with the lens. Um, I'm thinking about getting this maybe for my EM5, but that's still that's still a little high. Uh, Let's see, what else is in here? EM1 Mark II for $1,000 after 20% off, because you can take $500 off. So what would that be? Holy crap, EM1 Mark II for $1,249 minus $500. So what's that, $750? bucks. where is my calculator? $1,249. Twelve forty nine times point eight. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah, my bad. Uh yeah, nine ninety nine for an EM one Mark II. And so on. But I think the best deal on here is that EM ten Mark II with the kit lens. What else? The 25 millimeter f1.8 killer deal for 160 bucks, and the 12 millimeter f2 in the 300 range. That's that's a that's a good price because I paid 500 for mine, more than 500. I bought that brand new, so I probably paid like 600 for it, and now you can get it for about 350. Take take uh, 80 80 dollars off. So you're down to about yeah, 350 with tax and it's all free shipping too. So um
Anyhow, sorry. <laughs> Those are some killer deals. So check out getolympus.com. I mean that that's uh that's amazing. Uh, the Archie says these Mark threes are killing me. Just bought my EM five Mark three last November, and now the M one Mark three. Don't know anymore. Yeah, <laughs> don't worry. The EM five Mark three is awesome. The M one Mark three. I just um, I don't know if I would have bought like if I if I had to choose right now between those two cameras, I would still get the M five Mark three if I could only have one. Uh, between those two uh, because it just suits my workflow better you know with vlogging but um, like I said since I'm not accountable to anybody I can I can have both I'll be paying for it for a year it takes me about a year to pay off anything oh, oh hi Rick how are you uh, the Olympus EM1 Mark III is not enough for me to update yeah, and I, I think that's true for most people because the, the extra features they have are very uh, niche, you know, like the handheld high res. It's not like you don't have high res already. It's just now you can do it handheld. You know, some people are like, you know, whoop de doo right? <laughs> but that kind of attracts me because I can get lower noise shots too. Uh, but again, if I just bring a tripod, handheld high res is kind of moot. Um... Yeah, I under I Plato. I understand what you meant about the badge. I I can I can spot most autocorrect errors on there and, and kind of read between the lines. So don't worry about it. Oh, Dave, you traded your M one two for the M one three. That's crossed my mind too. You know, just uh, I I might do that. I'm just the thing is, I can always trade that camera in any time. I don't know if I'm ready to trade it in yet, but that would be that would be an option. What'd you get for your EM1 Mark II? I, I'm thinking they'll give me like 400 bucks for it, if that. If I'm lucky, with the 200 bonus, maybe 600. That that'll help. Uh, you're you're good, Tony. That you can look at these all day and not buy anything. I can't do it. If I stay in a camera store to too long, I buy I buy a camera. You know, like this Fuji film. My anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chuck. That's right. I, I the EM10 Mark II with both lenses for four hundred bucks, and then twenty percent off that, three hundred and twenty dollars. I mean, I, that's that's just I that's a smoking deal. <laughs> You're welcome, Archie. Oh, okay, let me take a little sip here. Oh. You know, when I drink this coffee, someone mentioned that I look a little embarrassed when I'm drinking it. And it's not that I mind drinking in front of you guys. I hope you don't mind. But... When I play back the streams, I can hear the sound of the thing going down, right? That that's what kind of embarrasses me a little bit like that swallowing sound, not so much that you see me drinking. But um all these little things, right? You never know what updates the M1 Mark II will bring. Um yeah, I I doubt they're going to bring in the, the handheld high-res shop, but maybe. If they do that, I will I will be very upset. If they do that, and after I buy an EM1 Mark III, I'll be pretty upset because they could put... Those updates, they could... I would think they would have put it in the EM5 Mark III if they could do handheld high-res shot. I know they were, they were talking about... The rumors were talking about having handheld high-res shot in EM5 Mark III, but... 
it didn't it didn't come to fruition um Yeah, hi John. You buy from Hong Kong? No, I've never bought anything. I assume that's off of eBay, right? Um, I um, like I said, I'd I'd rather go for for more expensive items. I'd rather go to the uh, uh, local camera store. Like, oh my God, you know another camera that's tempting me over there is uh they have a uh they have a leica m3 double stroke that's recently had the cla done with the 35 millimeter uh sumacron whatever they call it you know like m mount 35 millimeter and uh it's um it's in almost mint condition for like less than two thousand dollars I might walk out with two cameras tonight and then uh, I'll get like 10, you know, I'll get 10 emails from my credit card companies asking me, did I make this purchase? Because <laughs> I'll probably have to spread it out over a couple of different credit cards. <laughs> Man, anybody have an M, a Leica M3? And then I thought about it. I'm like, I still got film in my OM2 that I haven't finished yet. Why would I buy it? But it's rare that they get a camera like that in the camera store. I would never buy something like that online uh, just because it would just worry me to death. But when they have it locally at the camera store, it's like, wow. <laughs> Rick's been buying gemstones. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I know. There's, there's a couple of stores that I should never go to. One is uh, what they call Micro Center. It's just a computer store. They have everything there. It's huge, right? It's like 10,000 square feet of computer crap. And then the other one is the camera store. So I've, I've, I've sort of trenched down and forced myself not to go out because the camera was available on Monday. And I just, I just forced myself to stay in the house and not leave if I didn't have to. Oh, so I've been uh, I've been catching up on a lot of stuff at home, and I'll, I'll tell you guys about that another time once I kind of finish. But um, nothing to do with photography. I was going to exchange my Pen F for the M1, but now it's been discontinued. I want to hang, yeah, hang on to your Pen F, man. Uh, soft, soft be fun, because uh, that camera is very unique. Uh, not just how it's built and the way it looks, but the features that it has in it. it it's really in a league by itself. Um, I will never sell my Pen F. That will never cross my mind that the Pen F has to go. That That's a camera I will take to the grave with me. <laughs> I, I've had to put that in my will or something saying, you know, bury me with my Pen F, please. Nobody gets that camera <laughs> when I die. It goes It goes in the coffin with me. Um, Plato says the Penef has the worst AF of all the it does the, the Penef it's not like like terrible right but when I when I shoot with that camera versus another Olympus camera I definitely can tell that the Penef is not as snappy as my other Olympus cameras, but it's still fine. Like if you didn't, if you didn't compare it to any other camera, you probably wouldn't notice that it was really all that bad, if if at all. Have I used the original Pen F? I have not. That <clears throat> that's on my short list of cameras to get too, right? I'd like to get the original Pen F. I did. I did shoot with the my digital Pen F and the. Uh, the vertical, what I forget which mode it is, but it has a uh, it has an aspect ratio. Yeah, three by four. I I have shot like in this three by four aspect ratio, 
which is you know similar to the vertical ratio that you get with the original pen f and that was kind of fun and then i did some uh uh not double exposures but where you could were some some collages where you put them together and i i want to do a photo walk doing that kind of thing one time so uh because that, that was a lot of fun <laughs> Sam, why would I be buried with your pen up, man? That's yours. Yeah, weather sealed pen up. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people would buy that. Because, you know, people want to take that pen up everywhere with them, and you can't because it's 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 basically a, a it's a virtual rain bucket on top, right? Of Of just stuff to collect water if it rains. This camera would die. I mean, I've gotten this thing wet before, and I've been very lucky that it no damage. But uh, <clears throat> if it's raining, I never take it out. Okay, Let me get another sip here. I see a lot of people came in later. Thanks, everybody that's here now. It's because I, I normally start to stream about this time, right? And um, <clears throat> like I said, I had to start a little early because I'm going out to see uh, uh, Joe Edelman, basically, because they're having Olympus light, capture the light event or something where he's going to be talking about some of the features. And, and whenever they have these events, see, they have these promotions, too, usually, when they have a new camera, like the M1 Mark III. So I'm, that's why I'm like so tempted. Like I, I wanna go, but then I don't wanna go because when I see the the offer, if they have a special offer on the camera, I'm gonna be, uh, yeah, I gotta have it. Ooh, Elaine, sensor cleaning kit. You know, uh, I know we had this conversation last week but uh, you know it's you i've never cleaned the sensors on my uh olympus cameras because of the um the because of the ibis in there the sensor is not locked in place and it'll be moving if you try to clean it so i you know i would um i would probably recommend you still try to take it in somewhere to get it done if you do it yourself, you know, you really risk um, uh, damaging the, the IBIS, and you don't want to do that. So if you do clean it, do so at your own risk. I, I, really, I really should emphasize that last week. I mean, all I mentioned last week is that I never clean my own cameras, uh, that, I, that I go to these launch events or when they, they have them. About once a year, they have, like, the Olympus reps nearby that they come to the camera store and do free cleanings but you may not have that option right so i i don't know but um i just wanted to kind of let you know yeah thanks elaine i'm sorry i i didn't mean to mislead you about cleaning i i cleaned my nikon sensor before uh, but that sensor is locked in place and doesn't move at all. And people say you shouldn't do that either, right? <laughs> but uh, I'm kind of like you in that sense. Like, you know, why would I pay somebody to do it? I think, how hard can it be? But with the Olympus cameras, particularly with the IBIS system, with the sensor moving around inside, that that could be a real problem. Oh, Sam, you're back from walking your dogs. That's awesome. <clears throat> yeah, I I used to walk with the camera with my dog, but um, I unless I'm going on a photo walk specifically and I bring her with me, my regular dog walks. I she's a little bit high maintenance, you know, when I take her, so I have to really focus on her and and train her god she's a wild she's a wild bitch though let me tell you Whew.
Yeah, I remember, Elaine, you were saying that the, the, e, the autofocus on your EM5 was slow or seemed slow. And uh, it may be something else not related to the sensor at all. Uh, it's just, it's very hard for to diagnose something like that. It, I would just have it sent in and done. One video I watched recommended cleaning with the camera on. Yeah, I, <laughs> that, that sounds crazy to me. I just, I'm just not going to mess with cleaning, cleaning sensors anymore. Too much coffee for one. At Rob Trek, I did a one by one for Instagram shooting. It was neat, but the aspect ratio that is missing from the camera is four by five. Um, well, you know, in, for Instagram, I shoot. Yeah, you're right. I think you're right. I I usually just square mine off or just use the regular four by three. I didn't know. Yeah, but you're right. I don't think there is a 4x5. Oh, hi, Lane. I'm sorry. Send it into whom? There's, There's got to be uh, an Olympus uh, repair. I, I, boy, I just don't live in Canada. I don't know even who to ask uh, where to send it in Canada. Um you know, I'm lucky that the the Olympus Repair Center is just just north of me, five hours drive. You know, I could drive there if I was really desperate. But uh, Canada, I don't know. I'm so sorry. But I, I would imagine you could go to Olympus.com and find um, find find a repair center. Yeah, I try, Elaine. I I try to help. I try to be helpful, but sometimes you know you just <clears throat> the DIY person comes out of me, and I shouldn't. You know, I should have always have this disclaimer, right? Like, don't do anything unless you check with an Olympus rep. Or I I gotta think of some disclaimer because sometimes I do I do a lot of things that you should not do ever if if you really care about your camera. <laughs> But I'm sort of, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of reckless with my gear, unfortunately, and experimental in some ways. So, um, but yeah, when, you, when you're when you dealing with the sensor itself, the most sensitive part of the camera with the IBIS and everything, that's particularly uh, bad advice to say, clean your sensor. Okay, yeah, if anybody has recommendations for, for Elaine of where she can send their camera in Canada, that would be great. Hold on. I'm wearing my jacket today, and I had the space heater on at the same time because I'm not usually wearing my jacket, and now I'm too warm, which is really rare. Wow, it's like 70 degrees in here. That's like toasty. What was the other thing that's happening this week? Um, put all these cameras away. They're just going to fall off the desk if I don't. Awesome. Olympus... Really? God, you know, foreign addresses look weird to me. (laughs) 
Good deal. Anyhow, um, what else is news? Anybody have any questions? Anybody new here that, like, for never been to a live stream uh, before? Oh, you know, that reminds me. I was talking about this monkey in one of my live streams. I don't know if, if, I, if I got that. Nobody could guess where this monkey comes from. There was a lot of, lot of guesses, uh, like, um, God, I can't remember what the guesses were, but nobody got it right. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you guys, let me, let me get, <laughs> let me get my face out of here. The face detect is just so good on this camera. Anybody know? I'll wait five minutes before I say anything, but I'm just going to tell you guys what it is because nobody got it right. But I put this little monkey here right right in front of the lens to kind of look at while I'm talking to you guys. I I found another neat gadget. I was going through... Um, I went over to my mom's house. Patrick, good job. Patrick got it right off. It, it's that monkey from Speed Racer. I think his name was Chim Chim, right? I don't believe it. I don't know why nobody got that last time. <laughs> um, but I found a box to uh, one of my very first digital cameras ever. This, this was, uh, I think this was the very first digital camera I ever bought. And I still have the camera. It's downstairs, and it works <laughs> amazingly. Uh, but look at that. 2.3 megapixels. Just get a little, <clears throat> little nostalgia here. High-grade aluminum alloy body, 2-inch LCD, built-in flash, autofocus. And inside, everything is still here like, like brand new. Like, uh, man, I never used these cables. Still tied. God, the manual and everything is in here. <laughs> kind of crazy, right, to find something like that? And then... Oh, you had one too? Oh, you had a 1700. Uh, <laughs> you have different friends, huh, Rick? I also found some negatives from when I used to shoot in college. And this was, I shot most of these with my OM2N and uh, Maxim 7000, which, oh, I put it away, but. These are, these are from my college days. So I can see photos from my fraternity, my fraternity brothers in here. This was like one of our parties that we had. And what's this? CP photo finish. Color prints in one hour. So this was one of those photo huts, one hour photo places. <laughs> and uh, I also shot in black and white. So here's some black and white film. What's some notes on here? Oh, these are motion shots when I was experimenting with uh, uh, moving objects. But that's kind of cool. So I guess it looks like there's some cars driving around. An airplane. I'm going to have to develop these or scan these in, right? Uh, anybody remember doing contact sheets? Look at that. <laughs> I think I was only about 19, 18 or 19, uh, when I took these. Looks like I went down to Andrews Air Force Base and, and got some pictures of uh, some of the airplanes and the water tower that's over there. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to... Uh, This looks like some uh, couples here. 
for my fraternity party. Some sorority girls in here. <laughs> so how old was I in college? 18, 19. And then last but not least, I can't, I can't make out what's in here. Looks like more party photos and some trees. But anyhow, that, uh, that was a really, really cool find at my mom's house. There's a little picture of a cat here in the corner that looks good. I remember this cat. She's, she's looking at it. <laughs> what film did I use? Kodak? It says Kodak what? Kodak PX something. Huh. Pretty cool. Sorry, I'm just getting nostalgic. Thought I'd share it with you guys. Something kind of neat. <clears throat> but yeah, between uh, after college, uh, I got out of photography. I didn't, um, I didn't shoot anything for years and years and years until, uh, gosh, not until I got... I mean, I bought a little point-and-shoot Canon uh, here and there, but I used that. I used the Fujifilm for a long time. Whoops! What happened to my thing here? Oh, so what did I study? Um, I was studying pre-law actually when I was in college. The Minolta Dimage. Oh, yeah, I've seen those before. It says Release Priority S and C are both on. What does that mean? Oh, Elaine, Release Priority S and C. Uh, that means when it's on, that means it will take a picture uh, immediately when you push the shutter button. Maybe that's what your problem is with your autofocus. Turn those off. When you turn the release priority off in single point or continuous autofocus, then the camera will not take a picture until it thinks it has focus. Uh, so always turn those off. I got an old OM3, never intent to shoot film again. Would you keep or move on? Uh, I keep all my stuff because I always feel like one day I'm going to go back to shooting, and I have. I've gone back to shooting film quite a bit. Uh, my recent uh, thing I got from Larry was a, a Fujifilm 6x9 camera, and this is pretty awesome. Uh, I won't take it out, but it's a ginormous camera like this size. Yeah, Plato's got it, Elaine. Basically, the camera will just take a picture. So it puts priority on actually taking the picture and not focusing. So I always have both of those on. I was on a sports scholarship. <laughs> I'm the least athletic person ever. I have no natural skills at all, actually. No talent. I mean, I, I tried to play guitar... Never got good at that. Piano. I tried to do wrestling, and I, I, you know, the first match, I busted my collarbone, so that pretty much ended all my sports activity. I don't know. I mean, and photography is about the only thing that I've ever really had any passion for, and only recently. Like, I started in 2012, I think, really, with photography, hardcore. Other than I had a little stint in college. Uh, I took pictures for about two years with film. But, you know, that just got... I don't know. I lost interest for many, many years after that. It's weird. Both of them turned off, and the camera does, does take the pic without focus. Oh, that's not right, Elaine. If you got them both turned off, uh, 
the camera should be acquiring focus. So um, make sure you have the autofocus set properly to SAF or CAF. I mean, I assume you know how to do that, but I just thought I'd mention it. Because <laughs> you can set it to MF, manual focus, and the camera won't focus at all. My main talent is my modesty. How do you answer that? <laughs> yes? <laughs> then I wouldn't be being modest, right? And that's the irony. So how, how does somebody say they're a modest person without breaking the, the whole idea of being modest? Okay, Elaine, you have a set to SAF, then, and you have the release priority off, so your camera should be focusing. And you picked a single point, I assume, right? Because these, these cameras, I think you have the M10 Mark II, right? What do I have set? I have SAF. Yeah, I I don't know, I'm not having any problems. And that's the M10. The M5, this is the M5 Mark II. I don't have a lens on here, but um, these two cameras focus about the same. And the M5 Mark III focuses the best. I mean, in low light, it's, it's freaking amazing. The Nikonos, wow. That's that waterproof uh, camera, right, Chuck? The Nikonos? Oh, thank you, Rick. <laughs> um, thank you, Plato. Now, let me tell you, let me tell you where I think I got some of my teaching. I appreciate that. I I never thought of myself as a good teacher, but I always think, how can I explain this so that anybody can understand, right? And uh, it's mainly because I have to teach my mom a lot of things. You know, she's 75, and she's, she's a gadget person, but the simplest things just dumbfound her, you know? Something that you and I would take for granted. Like, she called me this morning. And I had, I had set up her, uh, her alarm system and everything, and she wasn't able to log in, you know, because there was, there was an update to her phone. She, came, she comes over every other day about something. <coughs> but the other day she came, and her, uh, phone didn't, her phone wasn't giving her notifications anymore. She got a Samsung S10, like an Android phone. So I looked at the phone. I said, oh, there's an update pending. Maybe after we update the phone, you'll get your notifications back. So I ran the update, and it was fine, her notifications back. And she calls me this morning. She goes, Rob, um, I can't log into the, the ring system. She has a ring alarm system. And I'm like, okay, well, walk me through. What do you see on the screen? And it just says, so she taps the ring app and it says create account or log in. And uh, apparently when we did the update the other day, it, you know, it, it logged her out of her ring app. So she has to log back in. So I said, okay, well, cr do log in, right? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So she, she, she logs, she, she pushes the login and she goes, what do I put in here? And I said, um, well, your email address, you know, rod, rod something at gmail.com. So she's typing it in on the little keypad. And she goes, do I have to put the dot com? And I said, yeah, put the whole thing, put dot com. And then she got her password and she put the password in. And then <laughs> this is what's really funny is she said, Rob, it says, uh, Enter, enter code. And I said, enter code. Um, and then the other line said, you know, click to resend code. And I said, oh, okay, so they're doing a double verification, right? So I said, yeah, just um, 
just hit the uh, enter code and it'll take you to the next screen where you can enter the, the five digit code for the double verification. <sighs> I'm messing up this story so bad. Um, but she it just didn't occur to her that she needed to, she's like, she it didn't occur to her that she has to push this button to get the code or tap this button. What do I she's she kept asking me, what do I touch on the screen? I said, touch it where it says enter code. And it just it just didn't she just that just didn't register. And she's like, Well, I don't have a code to enter. I say, You don't enter the code now, you enter the code after you touch the button. And she's like, Oh. <laughs> so, anyway, so I it's like Something that should take like five seconds for most people, you know, I, I have to spend about a half an hour um, going step by step. And this is kind of where when I start teaching something on the camera, I, I try to just pretend if this was my mom, where would I start, <laughs> right? Um, if I'm going to show somebody how to do something on a camera <laughs> and I, and it's, and it may and and the feedback I get has been great. It's apparently a lot of people appreciate that because I I don't want to talk down to my audience and say, you know, God, you should know how to turn a camera on. You know, like what's wrong with you? Some people, if I handed this camera to my mom, she would have no idea how to turn it on or take a picture with it. It would just be totally so. That's why I try to say, okay, on the top of the camera, there's a switch here. And that's where you turn it on, right? Yada yada. <laughs> but <laughs> oh, thanks, Rick. Yeah, she she's great. Um, love my mom a lot. But it's really high maintenance. Oh my god, just she still to this day cannot use email. She cannot use it. I had to set it up for her so she could log into all of these different things. <clears throat> Like texting is is a is she's got texting down pretty much, but when she has to send a picture with the text, there you know there's about ten different ways to do it depending, and she has to write everything down, you know, instructions. But anyway, what uh, James is asking if I could take a trip to Disney soon, or you're taking a trip to Disney soon, awesome, and you have the pen F, what? two lenses would I bring? Well, um, for Disney, I would think, I mean, it. what lenses do you have? And that'll help me, um, that'll help me, that'll help me out to tell you what to take with you. Because there's a lot of lenses I would uh, recommend. Um, I wonder how I block this 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 lunatic here, Pigo. What is this? Sorry, I don't know how to. I don't know how to delete messages sometimes. Okay, hey Roman, how are you? Thank you, Plato. I uh, hopefully I got them off. You only okay? So James says he only has the Sigma Seventeen. But I plan on buying new ones, so anything is possible. Okay. Well, in, at Disney, there's a, you're going to be going outdoors and in, indoors a lot, right? So outdoors, you know, the I think I think if you want to go budget, the 12 to 32 kit lens from Panasonic is an awesome all-around lens, or the 14 to 42 kit lens from Olympus is a good lens to use outdoors because uh, you'll have plenty of light. And if you want to spend a little more, the 14 to 150 uh, lens, kit lens, is probably a better choice uh, over those two kit lenses. Uh, but it costs like, you know, three times as much. Um, I don't, oh, I have it outside. But the 14 to 150 is a really good lens because it gives you a lot of zoom and it's very sharp. Uh, at the long end, it's a little soft, but, you know, for the most part, it's a really good lens. Uh, for indoor shots, you're going to need something fast because there's a lot of events that you have to be inside, right? A lot of the rides. And if you want to be able to capture stuff in low light, you're going to need a very fast uh, prime lens. 
So you can go with the 17 millimeter that you have now. I assume that's an f1.4 or 1.8. Um, and maybe maybe go a little bit longer, a 45 f1.8. But I think I think the 17 will cover you. You just need something for outdoors. And if if money's no object, maybe the 12 to 40 Pro uh, f2.8 is a good choice. So um, I I would try. I'm sorry. Let me let me delete this other thing here. But that that's what I would recommend is something something very versatile outdoors, where you don't have to worry about the light. And then indoors, I think your 17 that you have now will do if it's a fast prime. Wow, how do people do that? Um, there we go. Let's see. Um, wow, they, these robots are hard to, uh, hard to kick off, aren't they? <laughs> Let's see. Um, Just get the M5 Mark III. Hi, Rob. Thanks for the follow on Instagram. Sure, Des. No problem. I'm not sure what your Instagram name is, but I must have saw something there I liked and said, you know, I need to follow this person. <laughs> um, are people still seeing this spam here? <laughs> I thought I was able to to block this. Okay, um I lost my ability to buy cameras when I lost everything else including my <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I know I'm so bad. I just This is why I need a moderator. Oh man, I can't afford that. I'd rather buy a camera. <laughs> hey Rob, what do you think about using a Panasonic 12 to 32 lens on Olympus cameras? I have the M10 II and looking for a cheap yet good lens that have 12. Mi that lens is awesome. Okay, the 12 to 32 from Panasonic. Actually, I have it on my M10 right now. It is freaking awesome. It's not good for video, like for autofocus and video. Uh, once it gets focused, it's fine. But for photography, no problems at all with this with this lens. I love this. It's very small and compact. I mean, if you're going to do video, then the pancake zoom from Olympus is good, but it's a 14 millimeter, right? But yeah, this is this is awesome. I use this lens all the time. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, Rick, I'll, we'll try, just try and ignore it for now. It doesn't look like I can keep up with it because they've come in with about four different IDs now. Um, join or conquer. <laughs> L-series, interesting. I mean, you're welcome to join in L-series if you want. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I have a friend who works at Olympus, so that's why money doesn't matter. That's why I'm open to buying anything. Oh, open to buying. Okay. Wow. So if you, if you can have any lens you want, I, I'd still go with the 14 to 150 for outdoor stuff. That's a nice, handy, lightweight lens to take around. And maybe a 12 millimeter F2 prime for indoors. Because a lot of times on those rides indoors, you want to capture as much as you can. And 17 sometimes isn't really wide enough for that. So, you know, the uh, the uh, 12 millimeter F2 would be awesome indoors. And if really, let's see, what else is there? Because now we're getting the lenses I can't afford. <laughs> I was thinking the 17 F1 too, but you probably not. 
I would I would think the the twelve millimeter f two because that's very small, lightweight, fast, nice and wide. Did I already talk about color creator and video mode? No, I did not. Although it does work on the Pen F, I haven't tried it on my other cameras, but I assume it would work just fine. Errol says you recently bought a. TG6 to carry around. The Ibis is worthless, especially since I have a... Yeah, the Ibis is not great. It's only one or two stops, which is nothing, right? Um, so, yeah, it, it's it's a tough camera. If I'm going to go out in low light, I, I use it on a tripod, actually. It's it's a hard camera to use in low light. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm referring to the TG5, but TG6 is the same thing for the most part. But I, I did vlog with it at night, and all those shots were on a tripod. When I vlog with it during the day, you know, it does fine. Lauren says, I'm looking at an Olympic 30 millimeter macro for 225 right now, very sharp across the frame. Uh, yeah, the macro lenses, they are very sharp across the frame, but I don't, you know, you have to think about macro lenses are designed to be sharp across the frame close up. I don't know if that's going to be true further out, but I don't own that lens, so I can't tell you firsthand. Uh, but if you've, a lot of times, there's the potential, I don't even say a lot of times, I don't have that much experience, but there's the potential for when you're focusing more on a landscape type scene or things that are, you know, maybe a hundred meters away, uh, that same lens may not be as sharp when it's focused out further out. I'm sure it's fine, but I just, that's something you may want to look into before you buy it if that's important. Oh, you're welcome, James. Um, my M10 Mark II, the Ibis is super. Yes, it is very good, Errol. Rob, I know you have the 8mm F1.8 Pro. Have you ever tried the 7 to 14 uh, Pro? I wanted a fast wide angle. No, I've not tried the 7 to 14 because it was so expensive uh, relative to 8mm F1.8 Pro. And F1.8 is much faster lens, right? A one and a third stop. So with the uh, with Correction and post, you know, or in camera in some cases, I I prefer the eight millimeter uh, for the for the f1.8 aperture, and and it's a lot smaller lightweight lens than the seven to fourteen. I mean, it's a couple hundred grams lighter, I think at least. So the seven fourteen doesn't appeal to me that much. Maybe for my professional work, I was considering getting it, but I've been getting by with the eight millimeter f1.8 even in my pro work in real estate. Uh, so, but again, I, that, I think Olympus is coming out with an eight to, eight to 24 F4, which I might get, but that's not fast at all, right? For, for pro work, it's fine, but uh, Sam, yeah, I, I um, if, if you really want a rectilinear lens that's fast and wide, I guess the seven to 14 is it. Um, but that F2.8 is, I, I think the F1.8, if you need it fast, you know, the, the fisheye 1.8 with little corrections, not, not that bad. Elaine's asking, uh, is there another camera? Which EM5? Do you have the EM5 Mark I or two? I mean, the very best AF right now is the, uh, it really depends on your budget, right? Elaine, I think the M the M5 Mark III is really good. The M1 Mark II you can get for about a thousand dollars is really good. So maybe the M1 Mark II might be uh, your best bet because that that has the hybrid autofocus with phase detect and contrast detect. Let's see. I've got the 7, the 14, and the 8. Um, f 
Frank says the M10 Mark III and the M5 Mark III limitations in preset modes, AP and scene, etc. Discussion might be good sometime, in, in particular locked in ISO settings. Yeah, Frank, I, I would love to talk about um, the M10 Mark III more. I just don't own that camera to be able to tell you dis definitively that one thing is easier in another camera than another. Um, how, how would I, this, this spam is distracting me. How would I uh, explain that? Um, but yeah, the EM10 Mark III is really, really they pared down or took out a lot of the, the customization or the fine tuning that you can do with your exposures um, for one thing. So, I mean, it's like 90% there, but yeah, there are some differences, but I can't speak to them directly without looking at the owner's manual. But even then, that's not the same as actually owning the camera and, and, and going into the menus and seeing exactly what happens uh, when you try one thing on an EM10 Mark III versus, say, the EM5 Mark III. Um, Sam, the, the, you were asking Rick about the IQ. The IQ on the 8mm f8 is awesome. f1.8. It's very sharp. Uh, Mar Merrick says, I'm using the EM5 Mark III and Ollie 918 as a hiking vlog camera. It's great. Been watching footage of the X-D4. Everyone is going crazy about the IBIS. The EM5 III is much better under the radar. Yeah. Yeah, the... the I've been looking at the XT4 videos uh, today and yesterday, and uh, yeah, the the one I saw by Casey, right? He, uh, you know, a camera conspiracies. You know, I watched the Ibis on that, and it wasn't that great, not compared to our Olympus. Why don't you make some of us your regular mods? I don't know how to do that. Lady Leaf, I'm sorry. I don't know how to make people mods. <laughs> I'm sure there's an option here somewhere. But I I I don't I don't know how to do it. <clears throat> Um, yeah, Merrick, I agree. He needs to, he needs to try the M5 III again. I mean, it just, uh, that one time, you know, it kills me. Like he took it out in, in, in conditions where it got very bright and very dark. He's walking between buildings or something and he wasn't crazy about the exposure changing. And I, I get that. Right. And then he talks about the Fuji and he takes the Fuji out and he says, see, the exposure doesn't you know, whatever is fine. And I'm like, well, it's cloudy out, Casey. <laughs> Every camera is going to be fine if, they, if it's cloudy out because the light's all diffused, you know. Um, but like I said, I, I should try my Fuji X-T30 and compare it side by side uh, for exposure. I might have done that. I can't remember. But yeah, he seems to really like how this exposes when it goes from bright to dark versus what he was getting out of the EM5 Mark III. But I think, you know, for even if that is a problem when, and I, it's, it's happened to me on my vlogs, you know, I'll go into, I'll be like in direct sun and then I'll walk behind a building and it'll be shade. And the exposure was fine. I mean, it might take a second or two for it to adjust, but I didn't have any issues. All right. Um, I don't quite understand what what L series is trying to tell me. I mean, I know it's just spam, but it I I just don't know what what 
to what end are these messages for? Ah, uh, let's see. I guess people have nothing better to do. I don't know. Just to try and spoil my chat. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> you think it's Tony, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, whenever I see, like, you know, all my videos, right? Like, I'll get one or two dislikes and I'll say, okay, if I see one dislike, you know, it's probably Tony. If I see two, it's Tony and Chelsea. <laughs> maybe Casey will like the EM13 because it has auto ISO and manual. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, get the, Rick says, get the 8mm fisheye, you'll love it. Yes, I, I would agree with that. And if you're worried, if you want to know how to correct for the distortion and post-processing, just watch, uh, watch my video on that lens. I think I go into it in there. Nobody in their right mind takes Casey's video seriously. He's just trolling. <laughs> yeah, he's he's mainly for entertainment. I th I think he he tries to give some information uh, to the best of his ability and make it entertaining at the same time. And I, I appreciate that. Uh, but that's maybe that's just part of his stick, right? Where where we as photographers and videographers can can kind of live vicariously through his eyes as he goes on this journey to find the perfect camera and all of the challenges he runs into it's like you know things that those of us that are more experienced you know just kind of laugh at because it's like come on you know <laughs> so we're just but but we experienced the same thing when we were you know, learning about photography and videography. And just like I said, we're kind of living vicariously through him, reliving those times when we were going through it. And that's what makes it kind of funny, right? Because we can appreciate why he's struggling with certain things. Yeah, if you guys know how to block things on your own end, maybe that'll help. It is, it is a little distracting. I wonder how he gets all these icons and things, though. I mean, I always learn something, even from spam, right? Like, I like these little icons and eyeballs. But I, I don't know. Oh, my posture is so bad. <clears throat> yeah, the 7 to 14 Pro, it's a bit pricey for what it is. I, I wish it was about half the cost. Hmm. Oh, that's kind of cool. How he made the $5 bills. Interesting. I just found someone who is selling the Olympus 27mm F1.8 like new for 200 euros. It seems like a good deal. I, do you mean the 25mm F1.8? That's not bad. That's, that's, that's fair. I mean, that's kind of the going rate, I think, for a used 25mm F1.8. So it's not, it's not a, like an awesome deal, but it's, it's very fair, maybe very good, but not awesome. And then click the block. Uh, let me try that. I I thought I tried that. Let's see there. I have my options are pin, report, remove, uh, hide. I don't know if that means hide this message or. I mean I can do. I don't see block though. Hide user. 
Maybe hide user? This user's messages will be hidden. Oh, that I guess that's the same thing. I'll try. That seemed to clean it up, I think. Hi, AJ, how are you? Uh, morning from Melbourne, Australia. I'm late in party today. Yeah, I bought the M1 Mark III. Congratulations. I know, I'm, I'm like, AJ, I'm, I'm going tonight and I'm probably gonna buy that freaking camera. And I say freaking camera because I don't need it. You just, I just want it. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what should I, may, I'm, I'm torn, maybe trading the CM1 Mark II in for it. I might, I might have to do that. Cause I, I don't need two EM1s. <laughs> Of course, I don't need all the cameras I got to begin with, but uh, how, how do you like it so far, AJ, the, the EM1 Mark III? I mean, I know you haven't taken it out yet, but what do you think? How's it feel? Kind of the same, right? Maybe as the EM1 Mark II? Rob, we have Olympus presentation here in Auckland on the 5th of March. Final Olympus is doing something here. Yes. Yeah, I've noticed that. Maybe I haven't paid attention before, but I do see more events going on with Olympus, so it seems like they're getting more active. Leave my cards at home. I can't do it. i got to pay for parking when I get there, and I need my credit card. Everywhere I go around here, i got to pay unless it's really late at night. Um, Plexus, can't stop all of us. That's true. I can't do it, so why try? Rick says, the trolls will probably just switch to another username, then you're drawn into their game. Okay, fair enough. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> it's 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 um it's easy enough just to ignore them. Just makes it harder for me to find find the questions, if any. <laughs> How is the eye autofocus on the M1 Mark III? I don't know. I don't have that camera. I mean, only the the, the pre-reviews that people put online, you know, they they don't um, they don't really test it. I think I think Jimmy though, Jimmy Chang did did a test, and uh, he seemed to found it was great. You know, over at Red Thirty Five, I think he has a video. I'm pretty sure I watched a video where he uh, he was testing the eye autofocus, and he seemed to think it was really good. The Pixco 8mm f3.8 CC lens is a nice alternative unless you want it for pro work. Um, yeah, John, I think I think he was looking for something fast though, like f2.8 or f1.8. I don't think it was the angle so much. I mean, he wanted wide angle, but he also wanted it fast. So that's why I, uh, he was asking about the Fisheye Pro. I just wonder if the eye autofocus is as good as Sony. Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, I if I had to guess, probably not, because Sony's, you know, kind of nailed that for somehow. But I don't know. You know, maybe it's it's good or better. That's the sad thing is, is you know, they don't have. Uh, you know, nobody's going to do that test, right? Compare Olympus to Sony eye auto autofocus, um, because Olympus hasn't really reached out. Like, you know, I didn't see Tony, Tony and Chelsea do a review on the EM1 Mark III or the EM5 Mark III. Uh, they didn't have any pre-production videos for those, and of course, Frono's photo is not going to do it, and uh, 
Who else is big out there that normally does it? The only one that I've seen, the only decent sized channel that's done anything is Gordon Lang. And I haven't watched his video yet because they're really long. So I have to be kind of ready for that. Kind of like my live streams. But, uh, um, I don't know if he tested the, the eye autofocus. Anybody see Gordon Lang's video? Did he te do the eye autofocus test? I mean, he usually does a pretty thorough job. Um, but yeah, Olympus, you know, I don't know why some of the, the bigger channels, uh, that shoot Sony a lot, they, they could get like an EM5 Mark III or an EM1 Mark III and do that comparison because they have the Sonys, you know, on their shelf. I, I don't, I don't have a Sony camera to compare. Otherwise I would do it. Life is for living. Thanks, Rick. You're you're helping me a lot here, controlling my gas. <laughs> Anyone know how how streamers make people mod and give him instructions? I'll have to get a Sony and do a test. Oh my god. I'm like torn though. I really want that Leica double stroke M3. But it's gonna sit on the shelf. It'd be a I I can no, I better not buy a Leica, but because the Leica M3 is about the same price as the M1 Mark III. Uh what they're asking. Oh, you stopped watching them a long time ago. So AJ, so you love the feeling of it, the build and feel. The phase eye detection is impressive when I did some test shots. Okay, that's good to know. How many times do you need IF anyway? We have more depth of field. Yeah, I mean, the average enthusiast is not a big deal, right? The eye detect, autofocus. So I don't know why so much emphasis is put on that. Um, most of us can just, most of us are just shooting travel, you know, photo walks, blah, blah, blah. We're not doing hardcore portrait photography, uh, model shoots and things like that every day in and out. And, you know, somebody like Joe Edelman, and I'll ask him about that tonight, actually, when I see him, because he's, he's a portrait photographer, right? I'll ask him because think about it. The old Nikon's that he used to use didn't have didn't have good eye detect either. But he got along just fine with his uh, old Nikon's. And now that he has the EM ones, uh, Olympus cameras, you know, he's still doing just fine and doesn't worry. I you know care less probably about eye autofocus. I bet that's what he'll say when I ask him. What do you think about the eye autofocus? He says, I could care less. <laughs> I, I'm sure that's what he's going to say. So Roman, you only do portrait most of the time. So do you, do you think do you think I autofocus would help you a lot, or do you, do you get by without it just fine? <laughs> yeah, Tony says still crappy photos, but the eyes are in focus. Sounds like me, Tony. I can take a crappy picture, but <sighs> it'll be in focus. <laughs> oh, Ron says I bought a Leica M3 for five dollars. Needed the winding mechanism repaired. Otherwise, it was... Oh, my God. You are so lucky. Yeah, the M3 they have there has had a CLA done it, and it's supposedly in mint shape. But it's, you know, it's $1,500 or 2000 with the lens, which is still kind of fair. You know, it's a fair price for that, that camera. Yeah, buy... Well, I have my, I have my uh, GX85. It's got a red dot on top. <laughs> I could paint paint a red dot right here, maybe, right? Uh, so, you watch the you watch Tony's video on the new XT4, the camera, and he went into a rant about your losing with not going full frame i was reminded why i, I ignored oh 
Yeah, I didn't watch his XT4 video. Um, why, why, why the push for full frame and the constant like you're gathering twice as much light with a full frame and blah blah blah? It's like, come on. I just, I just don't don't know any photographer worth worth you know that's halfway decent cares about that because they're always shooting at optimal ISO and they bring flashes and lighting if they need it and if the light is low they know what to do you know I get good photos but if kids run around or people move fast I wish the eye autofocus locked on better but as you say the pen F is oh my god you're you're using the pen F for portrait work oh my god yeah, you'll do a lot better with an EM1 Mark III or the EM5 Mark III. I was talking to Roman there. Uh, I envy all these people who can go to camera stores and not have to choose a new camera just based on internet research like I'm working on now. Oh yeah, you know, lady, I'm sorry. That's that's got to be tough, right? That you can can't go to a camera store and hold it and feel it in your hands and um yeah, I would um I would have a much harder time if that were the case knowing what I know now. Cuz that's that's how I ended up buying the Sony NEX. I didn't actually go to the camera store and try it. I did all this research online. And then after I bought it, I kind of liked it for a while because of all the things I read about it. But then within a year or less, a little over a year, I, I switched. You know, I got out of Sony and went with Nikon at that time. That was in 2013 or so. It's, it is hard um, to buy a camera without being able to, to get a feel for it first. TNC are hypocrites. Well, they 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 do kind of go back and forth time to time, right? I think hypocrites are a little bit a strong strong word, <laughs> but you know the only thing I can think of is he did a video on uh, how he how he hates the Sony A7R Mark IV, whatever it was. You know, five things I hate about this camera or something, and then like a few months later the video it's like a camera of the year for him or pixel award he got he gave it a pixel award i think or he really liked it later he's using that now i don't know i don't follow their channel closely enough for me to be at all critical about them all i can tell you is i i did learn quite a bit from their channel when i started out back in 2012 2013 um his tutorials really helped me to to learn about exposure and different types of you know different different aspects of photography and when i watch their channel now um it's it's um he's talking about cameras that i'm not interested in at all most of the time um and he's doing announcements and and comparisons and I get it. He's probably trying to help people decide what camera to buy if they're going to buy one now. Uh, but um, I, I feel like my advice would be very, very different than his. Let's see. Yeah, they they still they still promote their book. Oh, Elaine, so you got a Nex also, huh? And then you didn't like it after a while. Yeah, that's that's exactly what happened to me, man. You and I are on the same page here, right? Lauren says, interesting how suddenly focus on the eye and using wide aperture is so important as though the ears were not... Im I know. That's what I'm saying. I think, I think a lot of this... It's a little bit... They're just kind of overblowing the need for spot on eye autofocus maybe at least for most of us like i said i'm not a portrait photographer so i can't speak to how big a deal that is if you're a portrait photographer but for the average enthusiast i mean it's not that big a deal 
Roberto says the X-T4 is tempting. Yeah, it's a beautiful camera, uh, no question, but... Uh, let me come back to the X-T, the, X, the, the Fuji cameras in, in general, why, why I have a problem with them in general. And then Rick says, I have great respect for Tony. He's saying things to many people don't want to hear but need to know. Yeah, I I agree, Rick. It's not it's not a small thing to put yourself out there on the YouTube like I do this live stream. It's really a big deal, you know, to put yourself out there on a in a video, and doing it for as long as he has. He has so much he wants to share. Uh, I just feel like he he's just been a like I said I've said it before. He's a little bit a victim of his own success, right? Um, but. Uh, Deep down, not even deep down, if you really look a little bit deeper into his videos, even even all the ones he makes now, there's a little bit of, um, he's, he's definitely trying to be sincere and helpful, I think. Uh, but it, it can come across as not, as disingenuous sometimes, because there's just so many channels now uh, that are giving the same message as he is because he's he's on that he's on that mail list where if a camera comes out he has to make a video on it and then there's like 20 videos about the same camera like the xt4 for example that come out and now he looks like he's just part of the pack and he, he's not s separating himself in any unique way um <laughs> Sam watches for Sam says he used to watch me. So you and I are the same. We used to watch a lot in, in a few years ago, but now yeah, I watch for Chelsea too. Yeah, like I said, the only the only reason I don't like Tony is because he married her first. <laughs> uh, Sergi says not the twenty five, but the seventeen F one eight. I, I kind of lost track what we were talking about, Serge. I'm sorry. Oh, in Squarespace, yeah. Yeah, I get emails time to time, not from Squarespace, but from companies that want to uh, want me to be, you know, sponsor a video. I just don't have enough views for to get paid enough. They pay, like, on your average number of views. And it's like, yeah, they're going to give me $3 to, to sponsor a video. And I'm like, man. I'm not going to waste people's time for $3. <laughs> you know who does the sponsorship thing well, though? Uh, James Popsis does a good job, right? Because um, he'll just say, you know, this is sponsored by Lumix, and he shoots Lumix. And, uh, and then the rest of the video is just him, right? Which is what we want to see. And that's what I really like about... Uh, James Pops is he, his sponsored videos are very short and, and there's there's a few other guys that do a good job with sponsorships where it's just it's just like a th 10 or 15 second plug maybe 30 seconds that they're sponsoring the video and then the rest of the video is just about that person you know and what they're doing so I, I don't think I'm at that point yet that I I can do a video like that and say this this is sponsored by Squarespace you know because all the Squarespace sponsors, it seems like they do eat up a lot of the video time, right? It's like, you know, you, you, you have to scroll through about a minute's worth of Squarespace information before uh, you can go get back to the content itself. And there's other companies, like I said, Lumix with Jane Pops, this is very fast. You know, it's like 15 seconds. Oh, Lumix is sponsoring this, by the way. Okay, let's go back to Iceland or whatever, right? <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, okay. Sorry, there's some questions here. Um, <laughs> Thomas watches Tony and Chelsea so he can watch angry photographer response. That's funny. Those two go at it, though, man. At least the angry photographer does. He says, "Ah, you know, God, that guy." I used to watch him a lot. I can't. I can't watch him too much anymore. I don't know. My my. I guess I'm just. Just full of, of angry photographer. I forget his real name. I mean, 
I got really nothing bad to say about his channel. It's just, I'm just kind of up to here with him. I just can't take any more. <laughs> uh, Death says, I'm considering trading my EM10 Mark III for the EM5 Mark III for the EM... I really like the starry sky and the ND filters. Yeah. I know, I'm... Oh, God, I gotta... I gotta... I gotta... I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'll let you guys know if I buy that camera, but... So check out my community post or form or whatever. I'll post a picture of it if I buy it. Lauren says, Rob, do you think owning the M5 Mark III, you already pretty much own the M1 Mark III in most respects? Well, I own the M1 Mark III and the M1 Mark II, so really I got the same camera in two different form factors, right? So I might be able to trade the M1 Mark II in. That's kind of weighing on me a little bit. It would kill me that I'm going to get nothing for it. But um, I don't know. I have to think about that. Hey, Ultramuck, how are you? Wow, just getting here? Uh, Rick says, that said, Tony is under commercial pressure. Yeah, that's what I mean. He's kind of a victim of his own success, right? He has, he's kind of in that mode <clears throat> of you know, getting getting good sponsorships, you know, that pay well, you know, because his channel does well. And uh so I don't I don't fault him for his how commercial is his presence is now on online. It's just it's just hard to like I said, when he's when he puts out a video on XT four he may be the first one, but then there's like twenty more right after that within minutes, right? Or he's somewhere in the middle, uh, and that's that's what's that's why it's hard. That's why I don't watch his his channel as much as because I've probably already seen twenty videos on the XT4. I don't need to see another one by him. Uh, and not that his would be bad. It's just I've just seen too many already. So that's kind of part of it, right? His videos are kind of in the same as everyone else's at the same time. So it doesn't he doesn't separate himself as well there. Oh, Ken Wheeler, thanks. Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, my memory, I've always said my memory's not very good. But yeah, you're right, Ken. Break the bank. You are killing me, Rick. You want me to spend all my money and go go just uh I'll be in the street peddling. Oh. James has great yeah James is awesome I love I love James Popsis I've been watching his channel since the very beginning and if you see one of my earlier videos uh, it's called uh, I don't know something to do with I'm being I'm tired tired photographer but I, uh, I gave a shout out to James channel when he was very small I really liked his his videos from the very beginning. Now he's just really he, he used to do a lot of his own pictures and photoshopping and stuff, but um I loved his channel from day one. And he was also really kind to comment on my on that video. I forget what it's called. It's very very old video from me, the tired photographer or something. <laughs> Do a free Squarespace ad, okay. This 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 live stream is not sponsored by Squarespace, but check them out. You might like them. I don't, I don't use them. I I have no no reason to publish my pictures because they all suck. <laughs> I'll put them on Instagram just just for the sake of you know, people know I'm still alive, right? I'm sticking with the M10 too. Yeah, definitely. Nothing wrong with that camera. It's awesome. Lauren says, I'm thinking of the G9 to be a little fat, but the screen on the top is special. I I agree. I agree. That top plate LCD is, is definitely... That's what kind of... I was thinking about getting the X-H1 by Fuji instead of this, this X-T30. Um, I kind of wish I did that now. Now that I think back... I wish I got the X-H1 instead of the X-T30 just for that top plate LCD. Uh 
<laughs> I can buy you a camera, Elaine. I would. I would if I had the money. If money were no object, like if I if I was like uh, just ultra rich, I would I would use I would do this channel and just give people cameras every every live stream. I would give a camera away. I wish I could do that. Like if if I had like Fro or Tony kind of subscriber base, you know. If I had their kind of money, but we'll see, right? Maybe I'll get there and we'll see if that actually happens. If I get if I get like a million subscribers and making decent money, um, we'll see if that generosity holds. Because, you know, when you have money, your brain changes somehow. You could turn into a real jerk if you have too much money. <laughs> or you could be an awesome person still. I don't know. I, I had a lot of money once and... Uh, yeah, I was not the nicest person. You know, your head your head gets kind of big when you have a lot of money. So I was a little bit, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. I was a little conceited or pretentious when I when I had money. I was young too, so that was part of it. Um you know, having money in your 30s is a big mistake. <laughs> That's why all these athletes and movie stars, you know, nobody likes them in real life. Because <laughs> they're young and they have money. It's not resentment, it's just, it messes with your brain. Smug mug for photos, maybe. I might switch over to that. I'm on Flickr now, which is supposedly the same thing. <laughs> yeah, you'd like to find out if you remain nice, right? Let's everybody find out what it's like to be rich just once in your life, right? I mean, I wouldn't say I was rich, rich, but, you know, like, I wasn't like Ferrari money, you know? that That's a whole different class of money when you're talking, like, brand new Ferraris. But uh, I was I was very comfortable for a very, very short time. I don't know what I would do now if I had a lot of money, if I would be this be the same idiot I was when I was in my 30s. <laughs> Cuz now I'm so frugal, you know? As you guys know, I'm like wearing a coat and hat in my own house because I don't want to turn the heat on. <laughs> I'm so frugal now. And I don't know what I would do if I had a lot of money. I'd probably give it away. Elaine says, I was super arrogant when I was young. Yep. Part of being young and successful. You're nice now. Thanks. When I win $500 million lottery, I'll give you a good cut, Rob. All right, Dave. Awesome. Deal. There's a German comedian. How his doctor says, money does not change your character. It shows you the character. Ooh, that's harsh. That's harsh, but I, I believe I, that's very wise words there. <laughs> Sell cameras and buy a Ferrari. There's no way. There's no way. You could not sell enough cameras to buy a Ferrari. <laughs> yeah, Lauren, I tell it's because I I don't I don't turn the heat on in my house. I try to save uh I mean, there's a couple of reasons. I try to save as much money as I can. So I use a little space heater time to time. Uh, but it's it's supposed to get down to about 2 or 3 Celsius tonight, which isn't too bad. So I can still keep the heat off um, because I, I only have to turn the heat on when it gets below freezing because I don't want the pipes in my house to freeze. But that's that's when I always turn the heat on is when it gets below freezing for any length of time. Um, God, you're so lucky. I can't wait to move to a warmer area. Ooh, Sam. Sorry, man. That's tough. That's tough, man. Divorce is tough. Did it once. Married once, divorced once. Never do it again. Either one. Too much. Too much drama.
Your video skills are very good. Do I have lecture? No, I don't have any lecture experience. How do you do vids with minimal cuts? Uh, I just talk. I don't know, like this live stream. I can just, I just pick up the camera and basically the menu system is an outline, right? <laughs> So I said, okay, line item one, autofocus. All right, let's talk about autofocus. And I'll talk, I don't know. I mean, I, I do a lot of, uh, I do a lot of retakes. Like I'll start something. Sometimes it takes me two or three retakes, not like full retakes, but just to get the ball rolling. Um, I have to, I have to uh, do a couple of retakes like, and, and see how it sounds. Like that little one minute video I did about the on the live stream about asking, you know, leave your questions for the live stream, the, the one minute video I just did. Uh, I probably did seven or eight retakes of that because it was only one minute long. <laughs> and I just retake and even the even the version that I posted, the one minute video I posted had one thing missing out of it. Uh, and that was that. The, the live stream that's coming up this Sunday is going to be about the M1 Mark III. And I did not say that verbally in the live stream. So that's why I have, that's why I put those banners up um, in the live stream showing the M1 Mark III because I forgot to say it. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I just, I just have the gift of jibber jabber sometimes. Um... Some of the longer videos, like like I did the All My Settings Explained, um, yeah, there's hardly any cuts in that. I kind of went straight through that. I had a couple of false starts when I started, but then once I got started, I was good. And the only time you see, really, the only time you see cuts in my videos is because I have to clear my throat or something. Um, you rarely see cuts because I mess something up. You know, I just, if I mess something up, I leave it in there and I, I, I apologize. I'm sorry. Let me go back and do this, but I don't, I don't really edit for errors. I have to edit for clearing my throat and clicks and clacks and smacking my lips and things like that. Um, but thanks Robert, <laughs> uh, buy shares after Corona has lowered their cost. Oh. That's good stock advice, I guess. I don't know. I, I don't want to get into stocks again. I lost so much money. I'm going to write to a person I bought my EM5 from and complain. Maybe that will help. May, yeah, maybe, Elaine. I didn't know you bought it used. Uh, Rick says, I wish I was rich. Those gemstones I bought today are for a museum quality replica of an early Anglo-Saxon. Wow. You have some interesting hobbies there, Rick. You should do a YouTube channel and just talk about your hobbies and your life. I think you would get a lot of a lot of followers, or it'd be very interesting to me anyway. <laughs> yeah, you'll be moving somewhere warmer when you die, huh, Tony? I hope so. I, I hope not, I mean. Let's talk about AF. Yeah, maybe sell it, but then you're selling a defective camera to somebody else, or maybe the camera's not that good. I don't know, Elaine. I don't know what I, I don't know what advice to give you. I would try calling the guy that you bought it from, maybe first. Rick's asking, what happened to the coffee machine intro? It was great. Uh you, that should be there. I did, did it, didn't anybody anybody been here since the beginning? Did I didn't you see the coffee intro? I can show you. There you go, Rick. <laughs> Hopefully that played at the beginning. I thought it did. Did you see it just now by any chance? Big talent to go unscripted. Thanks for the advice. Ugh. I don't know if I'm talented or just... 
plus my videos are very slow, right? So I don't have to think too fast. <laughs> That says, don't, don't worry, Rob. I switch my internet router off at night when I go to bed and while I'm at work. It saves me $20 a month. Awesome. Oh, yeah. There's a trade-in deal now, Elaine, for the, uh, with Olympus. So you could trade yours in and get an EM5 Mark III. I mean, I don't know what your budget is, but they're giving $200 on trades. Yeah, the M5 Mark III is awesome. Those are excellent deals, Roman. The 45 F18 for 150 euros and the M10 Mark II for 250 euros. That's a very good deal. That's fair on the M10 Mark II. Fair, but that's really good on the 45. Those are both good. The color in the coffee is great. The color in this cafe video was great. Oh, uh, yeah, I can tell you what I did. Um, I did that all in camera. I didn't do any grading on that video. Let me see if I can remember what I... I used my M5 Mark III. Where is that camera? It was just here. But I used the M5 Mark III, and uh, I used one of the uh, movie effects for old film. So I used that movie effect, and then I think I put it on vintage. Then I fixed the white balance to sunny, um, and then I used uh, I used a separate light, uh, LED light, and I I have that I'm I'm using that LED light now. I use a separate LED light to kind of bring some light in from the side. Uh, but I put that light at like 2700 Kelvin, so it was a nice warm light coming in. But I had the camera set to 5000, you know, sunny white balance. So I was getting a nice blend of warm light and ambient light in the kitchen there was at also at five, roughly, you know, sunlight. And I used that one art filter, uh, Vintage art filter plus the movie effect for old movie effect. All in camera. I didn't do any grading. That was all straight out of camera. All I did was kind of edit and splice it up so that it was short. <laughs> and I think it's a setting that's causing the problem. Olympus support will walk you through the settings. Alternate try doing a reset. Yeah, Elaine, just do a full factory reset once and see if that solves the problem. But it sounds like the settings you had sounded right to me. Okay, good night, Juba. Thank you. That says, Rob, your photos are great. Thanks. And then you follow me on Instagram with my crappy... <laughs> I mean, honestly, your photos were not crappy if I followed you. Generally speaking, you know, I, I follow people back because I'm at a point now where I have so many people coming up in my stream. I, I try, I can't just follow more people because I'll never see, you know, anybody at any given, you know, you know what I mean is there's so many, right? But once in a while I'll say, wow, this person had something that inspired me or, I thought was interesting, and that's why I followed you. Uh, I just can't remember what your Instagram name was. Does the rubber on the EVF come off? Depends which camera you're talking about. But I think on all the Olympus OMDs, they all come off. You know, the M10 I know comes off. The M5, yeah, they all come off, the OMD cameras. Not the Pen F. Can you trade in a really old Olympus? Yes. 
They, they're saying any... I think it's up to the camera store that you trade it in for. If you're talking about the, the, the Olympus trade-up event, the camera store will decide if, if they want to take your trade in. Because the, the fine print says any eligible DSLR, which implies to me that the camera store is going to decide if they'll take it, if it's eligible or not. Um, so I, I don't see why they wouldn't take any interchangeable lens camera because it didn't say it has to be a digital interchangeable lens camera. So I might take my old Nikon N65, which is worth like $5, and trade it. Uh, yes, Roman, I did update my camera. I did. <laughs> I do not follow you, Roman. Sorry. My Instagram follows are far and few between. It's not because anybody's photos are bad, but I just, I can't follow everybody. Otherwise, I'll never see everybody. But if I see you again, I'll make sure I'll follow you. I just can't remember. Tell me what your Instagram handle is and I'll, I'll follow you. Um, the Ferrari dealer is a few blocks from me. Probably can't even get in the showroom without seeing a few cameras. <laughs> That's funny. I, I've gone to, the, when I had that money, I went to the Ferrari dealer when I had some money and uh you know it was, it was like quarter million dollars for like a brand new Ferrari and at the time there was a two-year wait on that car I can't remember which one it was and I was like two years my god um and one of the Ferraris there you could tell that it the, the paint was there was a little bit of a drop or something in the paint, some defect in the paint. And I'm like, my God, you spent all this money on a car like this, and they have a paint defect directly from the factory. It's like and 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 you and I talked to the salesman there, and uh he he was pointing me to this other customer. He says, You see that guy over there? I said, Yeah. He buys a Ferrari every year. <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god." And then shortly thereafter I left because that that's just it was it was so much it was so expensive for our Ferrari. I mean, if 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 I bought it cars like I do cameras, I probably would have bought a Ferrari, right? Cuz you just you don't care, you know, money no object. You buy every camera you want. But I I don't buy cars that way. They don't they're just a uh, <laughs> Thank God I don't have enough money to buy cars like I do buy cameras. Cameras I can put on a credit card. Cars, I, I don't have quite enough credit for that. Oh, Elaine updated. Sorry. Because I remember last week or some stream, somebody was asking me about updating my camera. And I said, no, I haven't done it yet. But I did do it. Okay, I did the reset and exited the menu, but now my screen is full of little boxes with settings displayed on them. I can't get back to my screen to see. Oh, oh, hit the info button, Elaine. Try try hitting the info button. I if it's the M1 Mark 1, I'm not that familiar with I'm sorry, the M5 Mark 1. I'm not that familiar with that camera. Wonder why Panasonic insists on only selling the GX9 and G95 with a 12 to 60. Yeah, I don't know why. No, I, I somebody asked somebody before about that, and they didn't know why either. I don't know why they do. Oh, okay, Lady Leaf. I'm sorry. If there's no camera stores near you, it doesn't matter. I don't know if you can do a trade in online or not. Actually, I think you can. Um, 
I know in the U.S., like, you can do, somebody was telling me they bought one from B&H, &H, and they got the $200 trade-in. They didn't tell me what camera they traded in, though. Oh, Ekatira. Let me copy that down. I mean, you're in my live streams every week, Rick. The least I can do is follow you on Instagram, right? There you are. A lot of concert photos there. I'm being selfish here. Let me share some of these. Nice. See? These are awesome, Rick. Got videos. Man, you like going to bands. But I've been... um. I've been, uh, whatchamacallit, I've been watching a lot of concerts online, like, uh, God, I've been watching Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, you know, a lot of Queen, all his live concerts, Under Pressure. Makes me cry, those, those videos. They're so good. It's just so emotional. I just, I actually start tearing up. That's why my eyes are so red and puffy. I've been crying all day, <laughs> or, all, you know, yesterday. I am the Mafia boss. I need a Ferrari. <laughs> what do Mafia bosses drive? Ferrari sounds about right. Uh, watch and repeat this video. The info may, button made your screen go blank. You may have triggered the viewfinder, yes. You know, the other thing you can do, Elaine, is take the screen, tilt the screen all the way out about like this, and then try working with the camera a little bit and see if that makes a difference. Because sometimes, yeah, this viewfinder thing is not working or it's very sensitive. But if you pull the screen out, that that might get you back to a mode that you can start to regain a little control. <laughs> I'm sorry, I wish I could be there with you and help you with that. I just, between this, this delay in the chat and the short messages, it's hard for me to diagnose what might be the issue. That's is asking, Rob, is it worth doing the update on EM5 Mark III? I think it was about the EVF. Uh, it's always worth doing the update, but you can probably wait. I mean, I did the update. I haven't noticed any difference, but I, I don't know. I can't remember what the update was for even. You can always wait for the next one. There's no rush. I don't think there was anything in that one that made any difference. Last week I saw Mark Mattel playing Queen. Not as good as Freddy, but it was nice. Yeah. Yeah, Freddy is awesome. I, I don't know who Mark Mattel is. <clears throat> I actually have the original album, Bohemian Rhapsody, <clears throat> downstairs somewhere. I bought it when I was when it came out. I bought that album. I still have it. I wonder if it's worth anything. It's probably all moldy and broken now, but uh, I have the original album when it came out. And that's that's part of my project this week is I'm trying to put my old stereo system back together so I can play some records. Yeah, Rick, yeah, you should definitely get a, at least a YouTube channel, Rick. Iron Maiden, yeah, Iron Man. <laughs> I think I have that album too. I had a lot of ACDC. Okay, it's 5.30. Um, I need to start to get ready for my event tonight because it starts at 7 o'clock. 
And I'd love to talk about more music and cameras and, and everything else. So you got 200 bucks off, Jason, even without trading in. That's good to know. So they didn't want your camera, so they just gave you 200 bucks off. That sounds right. That sounds reasonable, right? Because they don't really care about the camera that you're trading in. They want you to buy the new one. <clears throat> oh, Iron Man is Black Sabbath. Oh, my God. That's right. So I have the Black Sabbath album. I don't have the... Uh... That's, how, that's how long it's been since I've really looked at my album collection and listen to music oh, um, somehow I just just had this craving for Queen but yeah I'm gonna go if I can I'll live stream from the event um, so there won't be any notice it'll just come on uh, if I can't live stream I'll post some pictures and stuff tomorrow uh, on Instagram maybe tonight That says, Rob, you should do something where we can send you photos while doing a live stream so that we can all talk about it. Um, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I'll think about that. I, I'll have to watch some other videos. I think like Tony and Chelsea do that, right? Um, I'll see how they do it, then I can duplicate it. Black Sabbath Paranoid was your first album. Yeah, my parents had a Donnie and Osmond <laughs> intervention. That's too funny. Oh, I, I like Captain and Tennille, too, if we want to go down that road. And I really liked Marie Osmond, just, just for the aesthetics. I don't know what even one song she sang. She's still good looking, though, last time I saw her uh, on TV, not in person. Wow. Okay, I really have to go. So you guys, uh, thanks for coming in today. I really appreciate it. And uh, it's always fun chatting with you and catching up. And, and that's a good idea, Des. I'll try and figure out a way to that we can share pictures uh, during the stream and just, just have some fun with that too, right? Uh, and I may get the M1 Mark III tonight. We'll see. According to Rick, I might as well. According to my common sense, I should not get it. I should not buy it. But I think I'm going to buy it. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Thanks. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll give my little live intro. <laughs>